Hi, my name is Pastor Hal York, and welcome to Truth in the Trenches. Satan has several weapons in his arsenal as he fights against the people of God, and one of them is deception, but probably an even greater one is distraction, distracting us from the best thing by chasing after just good things. But there's another distraction which is very, very subtle, and it's the distraction of vengeance. And that's what our verse in Proverbs talks about today. It's in Proverbs 20, verse 22. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. I will get even if it's the last thing I do. You will pay for what you did to me. I'm sure we've, we've said those words, but I know we've all thought them. These are fighting words. These are words that are all-consuming. They may never be said out loud, but in the heart they rage war. They monopolize our thoughts. It is hard to think about anything else. When we allow thoughts of revenge to take us captive, we suffer physically. Our relationships suffer. Our family suffers. Our fellowship with God loses its joy. Vengeance is a terrible taskmaster. The Proverbs reminds us of something very important, that evil repaid is still evil. When we seek to repay evil, we have sunk to that other person's level. Paul calls us and reminds us in Romans chapter 12, verse 14 to 19, the last part of that section says, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. How many servants of God have been ensnared by this desire to repay evil? This is not just a hobby. It becomes our life. Every waking hour, every time we have a minute to ourselves, we race back to that offense and relive it all over again. The sad reality is we have all been hurt by other people, and we have hurt other people. We have all been the recipient of evil done to us, and Satan loves to get us feeling very self-righteous and justified in seeking to repay or at least keep the thought alive in our mind to keep this evil alive in us because he knows it is the path to barrenness and powerlessness in the Christian life. And one of the great tests of faith is to trust God with the evils done against us. But we must remember, pride always goes before a fall. And when we fall into this well of revenge mode, bitterness, anger, and discontentment always come with it. But we have another choice. Proverbs tells us to wait for the Lord. Keep doing what is right and good. The Lord knows what they did. Do not avenge yourselves. Leave it with God. Trust Him with your hurt and get on with serving Him loving others, even your enemies. Paul tells us in Philippians 4 to think about those things which are just and right and good. And that's where our mind needs to be. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord, and he will deliver you. This truth will set us free. So let us humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, confess our sins, and wait for him, and he will deliver us in his time. This will free us to be about our Father's business and free us to leave the things He says He'll take care of with Him. That's a great test of faith. It's a test of faith we all have to walk through. It's a test of how much do we trust God in His Word to do what He says He will do. So I guess the question I need to ask myself and we all need to ask ourselves, am I distracted by this? by hurts in my life? Is it distracting? Do I keep finding all my thoughts running into this trench of hurt, of wishing I could get even, hoping I can get even, someday, somehow, somewhere? I pray that if that's the case, that you would just trust God, just to turn it over to Him. Peter says to cast all our care upon Him because He cares for us. So I pray that this truth would encourage us as we walk with our God in the trenches of life, trenches of brokenness. We live in a broken world. And as we walk through these trenches and these minefields, I pray that these truths would help us to walk to his, live to his glory in the good of others as we seek to serve him and love him with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. God bless.